All right, hey there. Uh, someone had asked me to look at the FCV. It's an animation file that's uh, used in Resident Evil 4. Um, I had looked at this uh, quite a while ago, like over a year ago, and uh, I, I concluded that it just uh, animation data was too complex for me, and I, I didn't know enough about animation at the time to, to deal with it. So uh, I, you know, I said I, I couldn't do anything with it. Uh, but fast forward now, uh, somebody brought it up again, which is kind of annoying. But uh, you know, nothing's changed. I really don't know how to make anything uh, better for that. You know, I said, you know, I'll look for, uh, or look at it again. And I said, and I asked if there's anything new. And uh, they, they just basically just like posted stuff that I posted before, which is kind of confusing. But um, anyway, so I looked at it and uh, it's the same thing that, that I had concluded, which was a good thing um, and also a bad thing because it kind of wasted my time. But uh, anyway, what came out of that was basically this uh, program editor here. Um, so uh, well, FCV editor uh, to an extent. Um, there is an editor that already existed, uh, including a exporter. So I'm not really sure what that person really wanted me to do. I'm assuming they want me to import the animations. Uh, that's not going to happen because, in a sense, the format is, basically uses like thousands of encoding schemes, which are basically types of compressions. And there's so many of them that you would not be able to decompress it um, just too much. Uh, you can write new data because somebody figured out that you can save values to one of the types, and so that that uh, was a way of accessing or getting in there to store data, which is cool. But uh, for importing, nah, and nothing we can do about it. That's just too much, uh, too com too complex. If you actually read the author uh, author's post, he made the exporter. He says that <laughs> he explains all that. He says this file format is way too complex. Uh, like, I don't even understand, he doesn't even understand what half the shit is in there, what any of the shit in there is. He said it probably won't even work, but he said he tried it, and then he showed some of the exports, and he says oh, it kind of works. And in which case, you know, it apparently does. So, that's great. Is uh, The importer part is just never going to happen. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you the uh, the UI here. Um, you know, I don't think import will ever happen, but just in case you want to tinker around with stuff, you know, it's in here. Um, so, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Um, this is going to be posted up on my DeviantArt, um, so I have a link uh, below um, in the YouTube description well, for that. And I'll just kind of show through this. Uh, before I continue, I'm just going to kind of show you this. Um, this is the uh, uh, animator or animation graph, so it's basically the animation uh, screen, I guess, or editor for Blender. So if we just go back, I have a cube here. Now, on the side here, we have all the animation stuff. Um, which, you know, so show these like tracks here, like these little race car tracks. Um, these are actual like the values for the cube. Um, so what I did is I let's set this uh, the constant. Is I set the uh, the value where I had it I had it at zero on the grid. I set it to a keyframe like 100, and I, I set a value. So I, I shrunk it and I moved it over a little bit. As you can see, I, as I move the slider, nothing happens. And then when I hit that keyframe, uh, you know where I change that uh, the cube at that point, it, it just switches. Right, so it's on or off, or basically just here or there, right? Um, that's just kind of useless. So they, uh, I guess they have a thing called interpolation, which is that you like basically smoothly graduate to that uh, position, or you know, kind of tr you know, uh, transition to that in a more organic way. Um, that's where you can add something like uh, a linear uh, transition, where it just goes from one to the other, right? But you can make this a little bit more interesting by applying a curvature to it. Uh, this curvature will change how that's working. Um, so I'm just going to drastically change these curvatures uh, so you can see how that drastically changes the animation. Okay, so uh, when we're talking about animation data, um, you know, I just looked at this because this editor is probably what the FCV is storing in it, right? Um, or at least we're probably getting close to that. So like an object association, we get that. Um, transform data, we get that. Uh, tracks, we get that. Um, all that's there. Uh, we get values. We get tons of values. Do we know what the values do? No, we don't. Could the values be the be the um, the curvatures? Maybe. Okay. Uh, we're also missing what tells us um, is if, the, if this is a rotation or if this is a position. Uh, but I, I think, based on my uh, research, I, I think that's somewhat kind of known. But, uh, you know, I can only think of three, but we have like 10 of them. So it's kind of a problem. 
talk about that. So here in the UI, what we have here are the different tracks that I was just showing you, those little lines. Okay. Um, when you cl uh, click on a track, you'll get this information at the bottom. Uh, this is the object that's uh, associated to that track. Okay. Uh, right now, this is the frame, okay, or the keyframe. That's the the change on that track. Uh, down here, we get for that track um, its storage type. That's how it's written to memory and it and encoded. Uh, right now, I do not know how to decode it properly, so the values here are incorrect. Um, okay, this is where it gets highly technical. Somebody literally has to go down here and figure out what these types do. And I'll show you an example. Uh, my post here on Discord, where I tried to figure out one of the types, uh, type 50. Okay, um, so I, you know, nulled the number, which means I zeroed out the number, and then I started adding numbers. And I just said, yeah, okay, it's changing. Go negative. Oh, okay, it's changing this way. Okay, interesting. Let's add more numbers. Oh, okay, well, it's been 100. 180 degrees, okay? So let's try to predict something. So let's say half of that should make a quarter turn, and indeed it does. So half of 32,000, 60,000 gives us that quarter turn. Perfect. So then we can uh, basically come up with the way that that's calculated, and we get this formula. That's a type 50. Now the problem is uh, we multiply by pi because it's a rotation type. Um, so that means that we have storage types and application types, and um, because there's so many of them, they're exponential. So uh, when we work out the math, we're looking at like a thousand different um, types. Okay, so we have to properly decode them, and then we have to properly apply the proper maths, and so that's problematic, uh, to say the least. Um, so the number you're seeing here represented is uh, basically just a number. Uh, can mean anything. So you, you, you know, you're better off just looking in a hex editor. However, you can check uh, at line 30, I think it is, uh, the way that I'm actually reading it. And if you feel that I'm reading it wrong, you can just change it, obviously. Um, so for example, type 0, I'm just reading three floats. Uh, the type that I'm on, type 50, uh, I'm reading three unsigned shorts. Uh, this is a little bit technical because you actually have to understand data types. And, um, you know, if you're interested in, you know, Using a different data type, um, you have to read up on Blender's API or um, 3ds Max's API. Um, basically, we have an integer and a float. There's different types of integers: a byte, a short, and a long. You see, here's the byte, here's the short. Um, there's no long value; it's just either a, a short or a byte. But there might be additional math applied to these that uh, are needed to calculate a float value. So that's a that's the problem. Right, so um, we also have the type here. This doesn't really do anything uh, in the UI, um, so I'm just changing it here. But this affects how the animation is affected in the game, so you should be aware of that. Um, that's pretty much it. So you click on one of the, the keyframes and you get a value that's stored at that keyframe. Um, and if you know, the type is type two, then it's probably a rotation. Uh, if it's a type one, then it's probably like a position or something, or a type four. Is, position or something, I don't know. Um, so anyway, so I correlated this with the skeleton with Leon. Um, if we click on like one of the tracks here, it gives us a object index, which uh, lines up with the, the model. So if I check here, I have bones one, two, three, four. Um, if I take the bone index and I subtract one, it'll give me zero, and that will line up with ob the object ID zero, which is like the pelvis. Um, so I can predict things. So if I want to select the head, Select the head, I get uh, uh, the index 5, subtract, subtract 1, I get 4. So I'm just looking for the track that, uh, you know, works on 4, which is this one, subtract 5. Uh, and then I can go ahead, I, I can change values. So what I've done is I've changed this to just have uh, three flame, uh, flames, three frames, and I can do a bunch of tests in here. Uh, in this case, I've changed the type to a float value, and I've introduced a radian and I'm able to predict the uh, rotation of the neck, okay? So for example, um, like in here I can just type some math. Um, this is the listener in 3ds Max. Uh, we can do a degree to radian, and I can type in 90, and this gives me the value that I had pasted in here. And we can do another rotation like that, and that will give us 180, so I can type that in. Uh, right now, I have the 90 in there, 
and I changed the type, so I'm going to change type back to 2. I think that's what it was on. Yeah, I think so. Um, so I should be able to save this. So save that. Uh, modified. All right, I'm just going to paste this in through hex editor. So I'm going to uh, copy the contents of the FCV and paste it into the dat file. Uh, this dat file controls the animation for the pause menu when you go into the inventory menu. Um, in the dat file, the first uh, FCV is the grenade animation. Uh, so I'm just overwriting that in a hex editor. If you're doing this, you probably would be more comfortable using a dat unpacker and repacker, and you're just repacking one of the FCVs, the first one, uh, to kind of repeat this experiment. But anyway, I'm just pasting it because it's, it's easier for me. Uh, so now we go into the test bed and 180 degree turn uh, back and forth. Okay. Um, so that's what that's doing. So we're able to kind of make a prediction as to how this works. Now, if we change the type to something else like type 50, okay, which is what I figured out in the post here. All right, the math has changed dramatically. Okay, so I save this. Uh, go for cross modified. Update. Wrong, wrong window. Okay, so you see nothing's happening. Uh, probably, the, the, the degree change is probably so subtle, okay? And that's because we have to alter the math. So uh, this would be completely different. So it would be, um, uh, yeah, so it would be this. Uh, you need to divide by pi, I think. Divide by pi, and then you're gonna multiply by the maximum value. Uh, divide that by two because we can accept it. It accepts negative numbers, so we're gonna do that. I think that should give us the value. Okay, now so this should be divide. There we go. So we get that value. So we'll paste that value in. Save that in. I'll just overwrite that one and go back here. Yep. Copy. Top. Go back and do the test. And we can see that it's doing that 180 degree turn uh, that we wanted it to do, uh, which is calculated by this formula. Um, and this is what I was doing, what, like over a year ago? Okay, I was discussing this. And basically nobody gave a shit, right? Um, and this is a lot of work to figure out what all the types do and things like that, and there's over a thousand of them. Um, so you really do need a large community to kind of to participate and kind of work on this together. It's, it's to expect one person to do it is kind of insane. Um, there's a lot of math behind it, so it's it's not something that an end user should be doing. End users are people that just are just really stupid and they only know how to click a button and they need very explicit instructions. Um, you need a technical person that understands data types, programming, and some basic mathematics. Um, and is able to problem solve to, to kind of figure this shit out. And that's a, that's a skill set I don't think the majority of the modding community has, um, just from interacting with them. Um, you know, for example, I was asking, you know, is there any information about a particular format? I'm just getting the runaround. Oh, yeah, I know if you do this, then this happens. And it's like, fuck, that's completely useless to me. <laughs> like, holy shit, you have no idea. Um, like nobody actually knows how to describe a format or how to talk about programming or anything like that. So it's a, it's a big problem. Um, but you can see here, the type changes the way that things are encoded, how things are decoded, how we have to apply additional maths and all that kind of stuff. I didn't even get to these other values. These are array values. I don't know what they do. They could be the interpolation. They could be, you know, what someone calls the shakiness value. Um, there's a lot of voodoo around this. Somebody claims that one of these values controls an IK connection. Uh, it's pretty all over the place. Uh, IKs would be kind of weird to have on here because it's not really a part of this. Um, yeah, it's it's not a thing that's in the animation editor here, so I doubt it. Uh, but I mean, whatever. I mean, it could be. I could be wrong. So, I mean, somebody would need to come in here and experiment and reveal those experiments. Okay, and that's one of the biggest problems right now in the community. Is like. There's not a lot of people left in it, and the people that are, are left in it 
they typically do not share their findings, or if they do, they share it cryptically. They're not sharing it clearly. They don't make illustrations. They don't make videos. They don't make write-ups. They just write, oh, I made this happen, and that's all you get from them. You get no example data, no nothing. So that's the biggest problem. If you figure something out, please communicate it. I mean, you know, that calculation I come up with uh, is nothing uh, less than just sharing this, okay? The format type that I use, the type that I use, and how I, how I accomplish it. It's a radian as a float, or it's a radian calculated as n divided by this times pi, okay? And then we can just add that, right? We have a th we have thousands of these we have to account for. I mean, just just doing one uh, is uh, participating, right? Um, so anyway, um, this is as much as I can do. Um, there are add and subtract buttons in here, um, so you can remove a frame. But uh, I didn't add the additional coding. You cannot apply animations to a skeleton. That was in the old program that I wrote, but people were scrutinizing it, saying that it was broken. Uh, where in fact it just needed uh, you know the community to help develop it it wasn't that it was just I did a bad job it just uh, so I don't want that uh, misinformation to perpetuate this will not apply any keys to your skeleton until everything is figured out um, okay um, and these add and subtract buttons I just didn't bother to add um, it just it wrecks my brain having to think about managing all the array data so I just didn't do it. So it, you can just subtract for now. All right. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's probably easy. It probably takes like 20 minutes for you to add this, but I just don't want to bother with it. So yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is if you have a value here that's null, uh, that's normal. Uh, some of the values in here you can hide. Uh, they don't show, right? So if a value is just a flatliner, which means it does nothing, uh, they don't write it. So it's not present in the file. So um, you would have to enable it. So uh, let's see here. Let's see if it's working correctly because I deleted the entry. But um, you should be, yeah, this, this is working. So you should be able to enable it or disable it. Yeah. Okay, the, the tool is not um, heavily tested. So it is probably prone to some errors. Um, but I mean, it's better than what we had before. The uh, other editor was uh, pretty bad. But anyway, if you do find any issues, just uh, post, uh, don't message me, uh, don't private message me or direct message me complaining or soliciting for stuff. That's, uh, it's really aggravating at this point. Like that's all the only messages I get is people sequestering me to do shit for them for free. Uh, so if you have problems, just post it on the, you know, on the comments or something. I will read it at my leisure. And if I have time, I will look at it. Okay. All right. Thanks and take care.